Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. I know some of you are expecting the finishing video today and that's coming shortly, um, but because of the glue up video that I did last week and how it relates to planers and some of the questions that I've got on that, uh, I thought it's probably best to cover off the planer video now before I get too far ahead of myself. So today uh, I'm going to do an overview of planers. Uh, before we go over to the planer, I want to remind you if you haven't already subscribed, uh, I invite you to do that and uh, let's get on with the video. So here we are at my planer, and if I call it by its proper name, a thickness planer, it self-describes what it is. For those of you with sharp eyes, you'll notice that I have a different planer now. I actually replaced my old green one, oh, over a year ago uh, with this one. This is a little bit smaller. This is a 13 inch. My old one was a 15 inch. And I found out that I don't really need a 15 inch now that I'm doing my glue ups a little bit different way. As you probably saw in that last video. So what do we do with the thickness planer? It does exactly what it described, it thicknesses wood. Let me show you how that works. So here's a bit of a mock-up that I've made. Inside a planer there are two feed rollers, an in-feed and an out-feed, and in the middle there's a cutter head. And what we do is we feed wood through, and you can see there's not a very big distance here, maybe six inches. So now you can see why if a board, a board is warped, uh, or twisted, there's not much room for it to flatten out. There's really no room at all. So we need to make sure that the board is nice and straight and flat when we're sending it in, and that way we get a nice straight board, just a little bit thinner when we come out the outfeed. Now there's not a lot to a planer. There's basically only one function, and that's raising the head up and down depending on the thickness that you want it to do and usually there's some sort of a crank that does that. The one thing that is critical on planers is to make sure that your in feed and your out feed tables are exactly even and when you get a planer uh, or you want to check a planer you want to put a straight edge across the in feed and out feed table and the inside platen here to make sure that it's straight. Now this this one here has a very good adjustment uh, and when I got it I fiddled around with it a little bit to get it exactly perfect and this planer does not do any snipe. And for those of you who are, have heard the word snipe but don't know exactly what it is, let me tell you what it is. When you run wood through some planers, uh, what happens, things can go a little bit askew and there's looks like a, a an actual mark or a little cutaway in the wood and usually it happens at the end of a board and what happens is there's a little bit of the, the cutter head sort of goes down a little bit and it cuts a tiny bit deeper at the very back of the board and that's called snipe and it's not very deep it's usually the thickness uh, maybe the thickness of one or two sheets of paper, so it's not huge, uh, but for a lot of people that can be a problem, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, when you're setting up your planer, um, as I said, the in-feed and out-feed table are critical, but there's also another thing that you can do that might eliminate snipe. Now, let me tell you what causes snipe. So snipe is usually caused by one of two things and when you're pushing wood through your planer, actually you, these feed rollers here are grabbing and pulling your wood through and underneath the cutter head and then grabbing it on the other side and pulling it through. And what happens with some planers, if the outfeed table is not set accurately, what happens when the wood gets to this point and it leaves this feed, feed roller, some, some wood can go like this. It dips a little bit on its way out and that causes snipe at the very end of the board. Another thing that can happen once the wood is in, sometimes you can get snipe at the beginning of a board as well and sometimes when you're running wood through, as it goes through, sometimes this mechanism is not 
as firm maybe it's a little bit worn and there's a little bit of play up and down in this and what happens when when you get a, a, a unit like that is again once you get to the end of this roller there's a little bit the, the whole mechanism can do a little bit of a jog and that does the same thing it causes a little bit of snipe in there and I'm going to show you two things that you can do that might eliminate actually three things that you can do that you can will mitigate that uh, snipe on the end of your boards. So the first thing that you can do to eliminate snipe is to make yourself your own platen. And I did that with my uh, old green planer. I actually made my own in-feed and out-feed table. And typically we use MDF. We fasten it at each side so that it can't move back and forth. And it becomes our new platen and that we, the reason we do that and we can make it this is just a, a piece of wood that I happen to have but you could make it much longer so that you have a nice flat bottom going all the way in and all the way out and that might eliminate snipe for your planer if particularly if it's the first situation that I said and what you would do with that and what I did on my last one is you would coat this with an arborite, with a plastic arborite material, a kitchen a countertop material, uh, and it makes it slide easily and it lasts for years and years and years. My last planer, I, I had no snipe on it and it was because I made my own in-feed and out-feed table. Now, the second thing you can do is to um, tailgate wood as it's going through the planer and I've just got a couple of sample boards here they could be any length uh, but of course they want to be roughly the same thickness because you're putting them through a set thickness in your planer and you can keep running these boards through but the way we do that is as we're pushing one board through and the rollers grab it, the next one you want to do is butt right up, exactly right up to that board and, and let the rollers grab that and push that through. And you can keep feeding wood through on and on and to the point where until you're finished and sometimes at the, at the very last of it, you might even have a scrap of wood that will go through the last time and it will be the sort of the tail end of that. Now the reason that that eliminates snipe is because when you're going through you can see the joint here and you have these close together there's no jogging in that because there's the the head now is being supported as it goes along like that so that's why that works. Now there is a third way of not worrying about snipe. So the third thing that you can do to not have to worry about dealing with snipe is to what we call best practices in woodworking. And best practices describes the very last thing that you do before you start fitting your wood is to cut the ends off. So in other words, in most cases, we try and cut the wood a little bit long. And we do that for a few reasons. For example, uh, when you buy the wood, often the very ends are checked. Sometimes they're rough, sometimes they're beaten, they maybe hit the ground, they might be dented. There's all sorts of things that can happen with the end of wood. And in an ideal world, what we try and do is do all of our planing, all of our jointing, all of our finishing, even our sanding, and the very last thing we do before we start to fit this to whatever project it is, is we cut the wood off. And if we do that and we have enough wood to play with, we're able to cut some or all of that snipe off. And in most cases, the tiny bit of snipe that you might get in most cases, you'll actually be able to sand that little bit so that it's not noticeable. You might notice it, uh, but nobody else will notice it. So those are the things that you can do to either mitigate, to erase a snipe, or to lessen its effect. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, there is something you can do if you have twisted boards and maybe you do not have a jointer. Normally you would take that off with a jointer, but if you don't have a jointer or maybe it's a long board and you want to take the twist out of it. And you can see 
that little gap there when I move that back and forth. So what you can do is get yourself a piece of MDF, and this is just some scrap that I've had around here, uh, so it's a little on the short side, but you can make it sort of as long as you want. And when you have a piece of wood like this that's a little bit warpy, you can make yourself a planing jig. And you notice on the end here, there's a little piece, maybe I'll move that up there so you can see there's a little piece of wood here, and it's just barely above the material that I'm going to be trimming because I don't want to run this through the planer head. It's just wood and it's just glued on. If it happens to hit the planer head, it's not a big deal. It'll just trim it down, but I'd rather not do that. So to set your wood up, what you do is you put your twisted board on there and you'll get yourself some thin wedges, very thin wedges. And now you can see that that already just with one wedge in there that's not moving at all that's got that nice and flat in there so I can run that through the planer now and it will straighten out it might take two or three passes to do that to get that top nice and flat now some people will glue that on they'll actually put measure that where it's going to sit and they'll put a little bit of hot milk glue on there and that's fine um, I have in the past uh, used a little bit of tape uh, tape all it's doing is stopping this from moving around but I'll be honest with you in most cases I don't even do anything because the pressure of the rollers holds that all down and I haven't had a problem with it yet so um, you can do whatever you feel safest doing and when you run that through your planer and as I say it may take two or three passes uh, you will be able to end up with an absolutely flat piece of wood and at that point you can move your platen out of the way and you can now run because now the flat side is underneath you can run that through and start thicknessing that board. So you'll notice that I've got some writing on my machine here and there's a little sign there that says down and that's so that I know exactly which way to turn that crank when I'm in the middle of processing wood. I don't have to think about it. It also says one revolution equals a sixteenth of an inch. So I also know an exact depth. Never ever be embarrassed to mark your machinery with little notes like this so that it reminds you exactly what it is that you're doing. Well, that concludes my video on planers today. And I know a number of you are wondering sort of what the difference between a planer and a jointer. I get that question a lot. Should I get a jointer first or a planer? And my simple answer is to get a jointer, first of all. Um, but maybe some of you need a little bit more information on that. So I have posted this video over here that I did some time ago. Uh, a little bit of uh, information on jointers that you might find interesting to have a look at. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.